one after 77 miles on the Foothills Trail. I'm feeling about equal parts anxious and excited, which is to be expected. And I'm walking out there knowing that my success does not depend on me completing my goal. And still, wish me luck. <laughs>、Good morning. It is 10 a.m. I am less than a mile into Table Rock State Park and we're doing it. We're out here. There's a lot of people because it's a beautiful weekend and the leaves are changing color, so we got a lot of leaf peepers out here, but that's okay. I like seeing people enjoy the trail, but I'm in a little bit of a flat spot right now trying to get my wiggles of anxiety out. Um, and then we're gonna start a climb up the mountain headed towards Sassafras, which is the tallest peak in South Carolina. So let's do it. I'm only a handful of miles into today.、Um, and something I don't recommend is using gear for the first time on your big day. So I've、um, not for more than like maybe an hour hiked with trekking bowls before. And if you noticed, I have some today because my good friends let me borrow theirs, which I think is a really good idea. And I should have practiced. <laughs> I just started jogging because I had a little section that wasn't straight up and didn't really know what to do with them, just kind of like held them out behind me like ski poles. And、uh, one caught on my shoe and I almost <laughs> face planted already. So I just need to be a little bit smarter about that. I swear to God. Okay, I'm gonna focus on walking now.、Um, but learning things already, I will say this section I'm doing, my first section goes, chipmunks are just running right in front of me.、Um, my first section goes from the start at Table Rock State Park up to Sassafras Mountain, which is a couple thousand feet. Of elevation and about eight miles. Coming from technicality or the technical specs, this is the second hardest section of the entire thing. Kind of glad I'm hitting it now because I have fresh legs and I'm doing a lot more walking than I might think on some of the sections that I could. Be jogging because I need to play it smart. You know, I'm only at the beginning of this adventure, so I need to make sure I don't spend myself in this first section. But with the exception of now almost falling twice, <laughs> we're doing good. Aiming for Sassafras. In a couple hours. So let's do it. I just scared the shit out of a bear. And it scared the shit out of me. I was jogging down the trail because there was a nice, easy downhill, figuring out how to run with my poles. And it was 
on the side of the trail, off the trail, but on the side of it. And in all this brush, there's some trees and stuff that are down over here. And it was in it, maybe four feet off trail or something like that. Anyway, and I came around, I got probably within 10 feet of it and it bolted because I startled it and it startled me. I don't know where it went. I heard it run back there and then it went silent. So it, I was kind of looking at the trees trying to see if it went up the tree, but no idea. Anyway, that was fun. No idea. It's back in those woods somewhere there. rock okay we're at the point where I'm leaving that double blaze going this way and yellow blaze up to pinnacle because up there but I taking off on the foothills and pretty soon here within the next mile I will leave table rock state park I don't think there's a sign but I'm getting close to the park boundary behind not by too much it's noon right now and that was when I said I would be up at Sassafras and I've been thinking about that for the last four miles and I have no idea how I came up at that time because my estimation generally speaking is that I go at three miles an hour pace to do eight miles two hours is four mile an hour pace and this is the second steepest incline of the whole day. So if anything, I'm gonna be going slow. So I have no idea what I was doing there. That's okay. Um, all of the times that I put were earliest possible arrival. Um, so it'll be fine. My dad knows that um, their guesstimations and he's used to this from last year so he shouldn't be too worried um, and I am only I think I'm less than two miles from it so I'm not far away at all but really probably pushed myself a little harder than I needed to on this section considering but I still feel good at the moment so uh, uh, yeah Doing good, a little bit behind schedule. Drinking water. Yeah. Okay, I'm at Cantrell Campsite. If you guys watched my first ever YouTube video, which was ooh, low quality, this is where we stayed, this campsite. That also means that this way, we are maybe a mile, about a mile, three quarters of a mile, something like that from Sassafras, Mount Sassy as I've been calling it, and it is 12.30, so behind, but not by too much. I should be there probably in about 20 minutes.
I was thinking. <laughs> I have it all confused in my head. It's not noon that we thought I was going to be up here. It's 3 o'clock p.m. So... <laughs> I got up here and for a second I really panicked because Dad's not up here yet with my aid station. And so I pulled up my copy of my like timing chart <laughs> and I am two hours early, which is insane. I cannot believe that. Um, that tells me two things. Well, it tells me several things. One, I did that section too fast. And two, I can slow down a little bit if I need to. It's just a nice reminder. So I got a hold of dad, which is good. Um, let him know how early I was and we changed the plan. So I'm gonna meet him down where the Foothills Trail crosses 178. We were both shocked at how early I was, which is a total 180 from how I thought I was doing. I thought I was behind. There are also signs. That one is interesting, um, which, I have been seeing along the trail and I met some people up top of Sassafras and it's the Trailblaze Challenge. And so I asked him what that was and it's a fundraiser for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, people, the, the folks started, I think they said at like 5 a.m. down by Heartbreak Ridge, Ridge which is uh, down at Lake Joe Cassie. And um, where did she say they were going? I think they end at Table Rock but it's a 28 and a half mile challenge um, that raises money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which is really cool. Um, and they've got people stationed up there at Sassafras, who I talked to, and they've got signs out on the trail, which <laughs> are really cute and quirky. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I am shocked that I am as far ahead as I am. I knew that I was going kind of a little fast, but I didn't realize I was going that fast. So <laughs> um, I'm going to take a bit of a slower stroll down the mountain also because downhill is hard on my knees. So um, yeah, just kind of coming down off of Sassafras now. That's pretty much what the next like 10 miles or something like that is going to look like overall. I'm not exactly sure how many miles it is till I hit 178, but I don't think it's far. So since I now have time to kill, um, I think this sign is really cool. The hiker survey, um, all answers are anonymous. It's done by the Foothills Trail Conservancy. Um, and so I just thought I would ramble for a quick moment about the Foothills Trail Conservancy because they're an incredible group of individuals. Sorry, people. I still get embarrassed talking to my phone in the woods. Maybe that will go away, maybe not. But anyway, the Foothills Trail Conservancy is just to my knowledge in this general region one of the most active trail groups of volunteers. Um, and this trail is kept impeccable. You'll see some of the signs in my pictures and videos. Um, and they just, they do incredible work. Campsites are all really well maintained. The trail is super well marked. It's just, it's incredible. And I really like to see that. I didn't know that they had a, like an anonymous hiker survey. I think that's incredible. Just another way of creating accessibility for trails like this. I love it. Um, they're pretty active this time of year, um, kind of frantically collecting 
um, food supplies and stuff for the winter. So they were pretty active. I didn't stop to take a picture because I didn't want to disturb them, but wildlife. going again. My first aid station was not at all where we thought it was going to be, but it worked out fine. Found dad, had a good break, refilled water, ate some snacks, restocked my snacks. Um, I did pick up from him a little radio here um, because the next section is much more backcountry um, and it's not like a parking lot where we're going to be meeting. So, um, when we're within a couple miles of each other, we'll be able to communicate, but um, been walking on this road here and now we're headed up there. My aid station will well, this next coming section, we changed also because um, I was, whoa, so early um, and the first aid station got changed. So the second one is at a slightly different place than we had expected, but there is another option. So. We went with that. It's gonna be about eight to nine miles. We're kind of guesstimating at the moment because I don't know how long the section is in the middle between what I thought was gonna be the next aid station and where it's actually gonna be. I'm not totally sure of the mileage, but it'll be about eight to nine miles. But I'm feeling good. Um, a little concerned that I haven't peed yet. <laughs> uh, that means I am dehydrated. Freaking mistake, but other than that, I'm doing good. Feeling refreshed after that and rejuvenated. I can on. There are so many stairs. I don't think you can see it in this, but they continue behind that tree and up the ridge. And I just came up some stairs. Oh my gosh. This second section is hitting like a doozy. I think for a couple of reasons. One is that mentally, I know that the next thing ultimately that's happening on the trails, I'm dropping down to Lake Jocassi. So I feel like I should be going down because I'm still way up in elevation from it. And so far, just about all I've done is climb. So that's throwing me for a loop. Also, I was feeling hungry when I got to my dad's truck earlier. So I snacked and my stomach just feels full. And I think it's partly the, common, the uh, carbonation from the electrolyte tablet that I um, have been drinking. So anyway, my stomach's just whew, feeling interesting and it's kind of, it's not slowing me down, but it is stopping me from jogging sometimes. I kind of just, I'm giving it time to settle. Any minute though, we got to start going down at some point. <sighs> not yet. I did it. I complained and suddenly we're going downhill. It worked. Still feeling good, but I gotta take advantage of a soft downhill. So I just came to this road crossing and I know I go straight across and I'm looking at it and suddenly I look down <laughs> and my dad has been here and he wrote out my name with an arrow pointing across the road. Uh, that's just the sweetest thing.
wasn't gonna go to Virginia Hawkins Falls, but the trail goes right by it, so let's look. falling <laughs> oh my god this is magical so there were a ton of people camped at the Virginia Hawkins campsite um, so I didn't record there but um, uh, several years back I actually helped with some trail maintenance there and me and this other guy um, together carried down a metal fire ring and it was in use, so that was kind of cool. Also, my knee has begun to hurt, which I knew was gonna happen. That's why, in part, I taped my knees this morning. Um, just the left one, which is the worst one. And um, going uphill is totally fine. Running, totally fine. Um, walking steep downhills, uncomfy. Going downstairs is when it really hurts. So it's not much of a problem right now. It's pretty low level, but something to keep an eye on. But other than that, my stomach is feeling good again and moving and grooving. Uh, Dad is expecting me at six, which is in an hour across this log um and I'm still pretty far away so I think I'm gonna be a bit behind that but he'll figure it out um got another one Ooh. alrighty back on trail had my second aid spot and um it <laughs> It, it got all confused. Um, if you remember, we had uh, readjusted to have the aid station be um, further in because the first aid station was wonky. Anyway, um, the service roads back here are managed by the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. And I did have to call them ahead of time to make sure that seasonal gates were open, which they are. But it looks like the map that we have might have been an older one because uh, we think that one of the roads got rerouted basically. And so dad wasn't actually able to even get to where we had rescheduled the next aid station, but there was a connector road that brought him down. So I ended up meeting him at <laughs> the original second aid station spot. So we had pre-made some uh, chili and we had saltines, so I had I sat down and had a hefty dinner, um, which is delicious. I did that last year, and I really liked it. It's just nice having a nice hot homemade something. My aid station was good. I resupplied water, uh, got more electrolytes in my little um, um, collapsible water bottle, and um, got some nighttime things. Got my headlamp. I have my bug net for later in case the moths are just really attracted to my headlamp. This section that I'm headed into is gonna be the longest section. It's 18 and a half miles. Uh, it'll take me, we're guesstimating, six hours. So um, it's about 6.20 right now. So it'll be roughly midnight, maybe a little after. My dad is aiming to get to the next spot. Um, which is in Gorgeous State Park around 11. So he'll have plenty of time to get there early and probably take a nap. <laughs> second ever backpacking trip I came out with my friend Hannah for a one night on the Fiddles Trail and we camped at one of the sites I just passed and I remember specifically because this is Laurel Fork Falls and there's a little like sitting area right there to view it and we have some pictures 
of us enjoying our morning coffee. We like packed up and came over here and had our coffee and breakfast at that spot. So I'm just having some flashbacks to the early days of backpacking with my friends when we must have been sorely underprepared, but maybe I should give my past self some more credit. Um, but the way that that trip ended is we hiked out um, that second day down to the lake and her parents came and picked us up on their boat on Lake Jocassee and we spent the rest of the day water skiing. And that's when I learned to water ski for the first time. <laughs> and yeah, that's, a, that's just such a sweet memory. And I am right back on the same trail, walking those same steps almost 10 years later. It is almost, almost headlight time. I'm getting serenaded by an owl off to my left. The forest is going to sleep and I am going uphill. <laughs> okay, I think it is time. Oh yeah, much better. And this is how you night hike. Hello, Blaze. One of the benefits of night hiking is you are kind of forced into tunnel vision, <laughs> you know? Can't really get distracted by things. Um, all I can do is pay attention to my fitting, watch for blazes. I've been doing a lot of jogging downhill, kind of losing track of how long I go for the stretches that I do jog. And um, yeah, other than that, I think what I'm hearing is either really small birds or most likely I think I'm hearing bats kind of tripping through the woods, which is pretty cool because I love bats. They're the sign of a healthy ecosystem. Georgia State Park, which means this is also, I believe, the North Carolina boundary. All right, folks, if you can read that, it says Heartbreak Ridge. Been here before. I remember it being tough, but not overly tough. I'm not sure from this side if I'm, oh, if I'm going up or down it. We're going up, there's the stairs. All right, wish me luck. Coming down the other side of Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge was hard, but to be honest, I can name at least three other climbs on the same trail that were harder. Ugh. I will say though, coming down, this is insanely steep, <laughs> is so much harder than going up it. Ugh. I did take pain meds for my knees, so they're feeling better, but still, ow. All right, we have a suspension bridge here, and I can tell by the sound, it's a bigger river. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the water down there. This is the biggest suspension bridge I've come to so far seen a couple, but this is the biggest one. This might be the Toxaway River. Maybe. Alright, we go left. Uh, let's take a look. Table Rock is 27.8 away. That's insane. And Oconee, 48.4. Well, we won't just, uh, <laughs> we'll ignore that. I think this might also Frozen Creek access. There's a sign up there you can almost not see. 
This says Frozen Creek Access. Last year when I did my 50 miler, I came down from there and this was my first white blaze. And then I took off the same direction I'm going. So that's pretty exciting. I'm making good time. It is currently 8.30, only 8.30. I might be ahead of schedule, we'll see. Okay, I was mistaken. <laughs> this uh, swinging bridge is much larger and it is definitely the Toxaway River. So I'm gonna hold this a little bit better so I don't drop my phone and let's do it. my headlamp on the middle setting because when you have it on the highest setting it only lasts for x number of hours and for the each lesser setting it lasts longer so I didn't need the brightest of the bright so for a long time there until now <laughs> I was going with the medium but after crossing the toxway and going up the stairs. I looked ahead at one point <laughs> and there were two little eyes, two little yellow eyes in the trail. My guess is that it was a fox because they tend to be pretty quiet. It was too small to be a coyote or a deer, certainly not a bear. So I think it was a fox because it disappeared rather quickly and not far up the trail, I saw another set of the same little eyes off to the right. So either the same guy or his friend, who knows? But they disappeared. They didn't really want to hike with me. Um, and then almost immediately after, well, so that's why I turned out my headlight because I wanted to see if I could see what it was, but it was gone. Um, and then immediately after that, while I was still talking, you know, to make sure that they knew I was here. That's the thing you're supposed to do for bears. Anyway, immediately after seeing what I think was a fox, something right next to me ran. <laughs> and it was a, um, must have been a groundhog. Didn't have a tail, real short squatty thing, took off through the undergrowth <laughs> um, and made a tremendous amount of noise. All right, so I'm here at a power line cut where the auger hole comes down. It's also another Frozen Creek access point, not where I came down last year. Um, but I am 43.7 miles from Oconee. I am 32.5 into my day today, into this adventure. Um, and I believe I have about a mile and a half uh, till I get to our next aid station, roughly. Um, I also just passed a sign that says, it is well behind the really bright one, <laughs> that says that I am leaving Gorgeous State Park. I am almost to the next aid station, which is cool, and it is 10.30, so yeah, I'm going to be there about the time that Dad's arriving. Cool. Okay, I didn't record it because, um... I'm feeling ugh, right now, but I just met up with my dad and did what I was calling a midnight meal because that chili earlier was delicious, but it's been like 18 miles. So I needed another big, relatively big calorie intake other than, you know, bars and snacks. So, we did some wraps, that was really good. Had some hot tea to warm up because temperature is definitely dropping. I even added a layer and put my lightweight gloves on. So how am I feeling? Ugh. To sum it up, um, 
the main issue. So my stomach is upset with me again. Not horribly bad. I don't feel like I'm on the verge of being sick, but it's just ugh, feeling. And other than that, I'm just tired. I'm doing a lot of yawning. And yeah, this is a, a 13 mile stretch. And it is, generally speaking, presumed to be my hardest section. There's a long stretch, about 10 miles. And then I get to Whitewater. And Whitewater Falls is absolutely beautiful. But the hike from the bottom of it to the top is just grueling. And I'm thinking I'll get to the top where my next aid station will be. Dad will be up there probably around 4 a.m. Okay, I'm feeling better. I'm not 100%. I can still feel my stomach kind of doing weird stuff, but I think the Tums that I took kicked in and um, about a half hour ago, I stopped and dug myself a cat hole <clears throat> and I think that that is really helping as well. So, feeling better. Um, I was able to slip back into my like normal hiking uh, pace, which is good because I was getting kind of worried about how slow I went in that first hour. I probably did less than two miles because I was just feeling ugh and really throwing myself a pity party, but back on track. All right, so about seven or eight minutes ago, I went through the bear campsites, campground area. Oh, this is a very small bridge. Um, and at the same time there, I passed the spur trail for Hilliard Falls. And that signifies that I've gone about six miles since I last saw dad, um, which means I'm, well, probably at this point now that I'm making this, about halfway through this section. Good morning, it's daytime. Suddenly I am walking slow with my mama. Hi mama. And uh, a lot has been happening, um, so I am not videoing much. And to be completely honest, I'm not going to video a whole lot more. Um, I'm having <laughs> I'm having issues, um, mostly with nausea. Um, eating makes me nauseous. Walking hard uphill makes me nauseous. Walking fast and jogging makes me nauseous. I'm not really sure what's going on. We have no answers. I did get up to the top of Whitewater Falls, which was my most recent aid station, two hours late because I was going so slow. Um, it was at that aid station that my mom and my boyfriend showed up, which was a big morale boost and um, I was there for two hours. We took a, basically a two hour break. I napped for 20 minutes, woke up, threw up, felt better. And then we started walking again. But basically I'm running on a virtually empty stomach. I've been chewing on pretzels, but it's just not enough. And eating is making me nauseous. So I'm not really sure. There's not really an answer here. I'm not sure what to do about it. I have made my peace with not necessarily attaining 77 miles today. That's okay. We've got some extraneous circumstances popping up. We're gonna see how far we make it. I passed the 50 mile mark probably very recently. So any other steps I take is a new record for me, but it's less about that and more about stopping when I feel that it's time. So I'll keep you updated, but that's where we're at. Hey 
Hey y'all. I am walking up on mile roughly 58 of my day. Headed to the fish hatchery, the wall hall of fish hatchery access point for the Foothills Trail. Uh, and I'm done. This is the end. I have made that decision and I feel pretty good about it. Um, I'm content with what I've done. I'm proud of myself for what I've done and I'm proud of myself for making a decision that needed to be made when situations arose. So um, I'll be sharing more information later on with all of my thoughts about kind of how this went and some reflections later on. But for now, I'm done and I'm happy.